changing topics a little bit, reparations. Um, again, th th this is from a video that Mr. Ruslan put up on his YouTube channel where he's going to be giving his information in, in just a while, in a bit. Uh, you, you, you mentioned you try to equate the, the whole type, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the war on drugs with something that is almost equatable to African Americans in the United States receiving reparations. Do you agree uh, in, in the reparations for African Americans in the U.S.? To answer it simply, yes, mm -hmm. I do agree with reparations. I don't know the best way to go about paying out reparations. What are the best systems for reparations? The video you're referencing is a video I made reacting to an Andrew Scholes, Charlemagne the God video, where they break down the need for reparations, not just because of slavery, which was 150 years ago, but for the continued systemic denial to black people to own private property, have private property rights, to build wealth, to attain assets. So Andrew Schultz's video was like, you can say that because of slavery, you you know, people should get reparations, which there are corporations around today that you can Google that have benefited from slavery. Mm -hmm. He, But his argument was, we don't even need to go into um, slavery. We can just look at the apartheid that African-Americans lived under uh, up until 50 60 years ago mm -hmm. right and so my, my the point of my video was to say yes we could do that or we could even take it a little closer and say well what about the disparities in these drug laws of the 80s on top of um on top of potentially the cia not and, and i never said president ronald reagan personally knew mm -hmm. i do think that in government there's very much so a machiavellian philosophy which i'm not sure if you've ever like looked at machiavelli or his his views, but there's a there's a there's a there's a view of the ends justify the means. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they're intentionally again, you know, it's really tough to describe intent to something, yeah, yeah. right? But it's that it's that. Listen, we got to do this messy thing. We got to do this reckless thing. Why? Well, because we got to stop the spread of communism by any means necessary. And the president doesn't even need to know that this is happening. We're just gonna do it. You know what I mean? We're just yeah. gonna do it. We're gonna because the ends justify the means. So to your point. I do think there's a history of that throughout our our government, right? Throughout the CIA, throughout whoever. And it's not to it's not to bad mouth the government. It's, it's in the same way to say, hey, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. Yeah. And I am willing to go to the ends of the earth to tell people about Jesus. But at the same time, when somebody brings up, you know, um, the Crusades, yeah. if somebody brings up the Protestant Reformation, when somebody brings up whatever, a good Christian isn't going to say, ah, we're not going to talk about that. That's stupid. We're not going to talk about that. And we're going to say, hey, yeah, those things were done. And they actually didn't even reflect the values of Jesus. So yeah. these things that were done by the CIA actually don't even reflect the values of uh, the pursuit of life, liberty, and justice for all. They're actually contrary to the very values that America stands for, which was Martin Luther King's case for why we needed civil rights. It's like, hey, you guys are saying this is the you know, pursuit of life, liberty, and justice for all. But we're not actually living it out. We need to change these laws so that everybody can be afforded the right of our actual values. I think that would be the critique. It's not to say America is evil. I don't believe America is evil. I don't believe capitalism is evil. Yeah. I believe we fall short of the values that we claim to represent when it comes to black America. I actually didn't see that video regarding um, Andrew Source that you're mentioning. I actually just took it from the one that you were talking about, the war on drugs, where you mentioned reparations and the war on drugs. Um, yep. I, I, it's three I, different videos. They all kind of connect together. Sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. So yeah, yeah. Th thank you for letting me know. I'll probably check them out and see. Um, but I find a problem with reparations. I, I think reparations is... I'm, I'm going to tell you, look, this is the only reparation. I, I do agree with a certain form of reparations, but not the, the reparations that most people are talking about, which is a a, a monetary one. And mm -hmm. I'm just curious why it stands at monetary. I'm, and I'm going to tell you the story. I saw on The Breakfast Club the most comprehensive plan for reparations anybody has talked to. Everybody ends at reparations. And, and they always end at, but, but we don't know how to give them out or we don't know how to give them out or, 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 or some, something like that. But let me tell you what T.I. said. T.I. said this. They identified a company in England. It's called, I don't know if you heard about this, Lloyd's of uh, London, it's called. What they are is that they are an insurance company. And they were 
operating when the transatlantic trade route was operating, right? So what they did was essentially they insured the cargo. The cargo meaning black African slaves from Africa, right? That were taken there, uh, that were obviously taken by the white men to bring over to America. But something that doesn't get mentioned too much either is also sold by Africans to the white man also to bring to America. So Africans also have a... Uh, a a, a a a negative impact on the slave trade also. Continue on the TI story. He says that since this company insured this cargo, meaning slaves, they were able to build up their resources. Right now, they're like a billion-dollar company. He said because this company was involved in this trade, we are asking that company to give every, what was it, 10% of the worth of the company to African-Americans. And but but not only that, he also said that that company should also and and, and that was ten percent of the uh, company's profits in perpetuity, meaning until the company operates forever. And then he also said to for that company to give a one million dollar loan at one percent to every single Black African American in the United States. That was his plan. Sounds great. That's an actual plan, to be honest. People talking about actual money here. But where I find the problem as a Christian is if we're going to give reparations, why do we stop at the money part? Why not give the land back? Why not send Valentine to the Dominican Republic, Russell to Russia, and everybody else, and give the land back to the Native Americans? Why, why stop at the money part? Question. Well, I mean, you're talking about T.I. writing reparation policy. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, but, I don't know, but, man. Uh, but uh, believe it or not, that, that is the most comprehensive one I found. Uh, nobody ever speaks to a, 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 yeah, a monetary there's other one. ones. Yeah, there's other ones. Um, Asheville, North Carolina just passed a form of reparation. But they didn't right? say anything. Um, they didn't say anything. That was just like a, 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 a that was just like a. a, a, a a saying kind of thing that was like a figure of speech. No, of they they they, they but, put money they put money into specific communities. They are building up infrastructure in specific areas. Uh, listen, so the, so so let's just say that the that there's there's a there's two extremes, right? One extreme would be cash cash checks, right? And then there's another bill I think in Congress that's like three hundred thousand per family or something like uh -huh. that, right? Or they were there was a proposal. Uh, and then the other extreme would, would, would in terms of reparations would be what hap was happening in North Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina, where they're doing, they would call it a, a, a reparation or a form of reparation. However, I don't know if it's that's a true reparation or not. Um, I don't know. I, I am not a, a, like a skilled economist. I don't know how this would all be set up. Um, to your question, why don't we all just go back to where we came from? Is that the real question? Meaning, if we're going to... Reparations <laughs> is to... But the, the whole thing of reparation is we're trying to undo the sins of our forefathers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if we're going to do that, right, why do we stop at the uh -huh. money? Why don't we give the land back? Well, we did. We gave Native Americans some reservations. They yep. That's not a reparation, but we did give them some of the land back and let them have autonomous governments and called... You know, it, I don't know if they're out there in New York, but we have a ton of them called reservations. So we, mm -hmm. there's the, the Viejas reservation. Mm -hmm. There's these different reservations and they can function autonomously mm -hmm. without with little oversight. So we did give some of the land back. But it's not some. That's the thing. If we want to be fair, it has to be oh. all of the land back. You get what I'm saying? I mean, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we want to be fair. Like, like according to you. But uh, again, if that's if, if Native Americans want all of the land back, mm -hmm. then I don't know. They need to take that, that up and create a whole thing for it. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the tough part about like conquest and all this stuff, right? Imperialism, conquesting, discovering land when there was already people on the land, right? It, it all becomes very. And now you're talking about generations, generations, generations later. Um, yeah, I think natives got the short end of the stick. I think I think the the Mex Mexico got the short end of the stick. I mean, half of the United States was Mexico initially, right? <laughs> How far back you want to trace this stuff is is very is very is very difficult, you know. That's what I'm, and that's. that's I agree, it's complicated. I agree, it's complicated, and I'm not necessarily advocating that there needs to be a cash reparation. 
I'm saying, why is the idea of a reparation when we did it for the Japanese, when we tried to do it for the Native Americans with the reservations, why is even the idea such a preposterous idea that conservatives just go, that could never happen? Why? You know what I mean? I think that is a bit, that is very interesting. To me. Because I, I, the, I think the reason that is some conservatives find it preposterous is because the ones who are getting the benefits of these reparations are not the ones who went through the issue themselves, right? And a whole bunch of Africans, Americans will argue that they said that they have never lived in a freer land in the United States. They have, they don't know anything. They actually, some of them would actually go and say, I'm actually glad I got taken, my ancestors got taken from Africa and brought here on a slave ship because I'm able to be here in America right now. This, again, this is from African Americans themselves. And if we're going to right the wrongs of history, we can't stop at the money part. And that, and that and that's where we we seem, everybody seems to stop there. No, the, let's give the money part. If the people that suffer slavery will still be alive today, I, I, I mean, to be honest, I think, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it, I, I think it will be racist of somebody to be against reparations if the ones receiving the reparations were the, were the ones directly affected by them. You get what I'm saying? Like when they freed the slaves, when when the Emancipation Proclamation was uh, given and Juneteenth happened and all these things, uh, when uh, slavery was abolished, in the, officially abolished in the United States, if somebody was to come out and say, oh, you know what, we're going to give you guys uh, Alabama, Mississippi, and all these three states, these are for you guys, to so you guys, we did something wrong. I mean, I don't think that will be preposterous, in my personal opinion. But you're talking about who knows how many generations after slavery has ended. Yeah. And um, we, we, we are going to give money, first of all, money that belongs to the, uh, the, to the government and not even to the government, but, but to the people. So, for example, somebody right now today will be paying for reparations that who knows if even a, a white person in his family ever even owned slaves. So it will be kind of unfair you, you get what I'm saying? And I think that's where there's a lot of... Yeah, uh, I, listen, I think the, 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 the logic of that, though, is that reparations are only for slavery. So, first of all, let me be very clear. This is not me speaking on behalf of Black people or Black issues. This is me speaking on behalf of my opinion as uh -huh. Ruslan, uh, and that's it. So, again, the video that I did, there was multiple videos, but the specific one I'm talking about is that reparation there's a better argument for reparations not just for slavery that was 150 years ago mm -hmm. but that everything that happened after slavery which created and i know conservatives hate this word a systemic issue that prevented black people from acquiring wealth and when they did acquire wealth and they built black wall street it was burnt to the ground and no one was ever held accountable Right. So I think that that is the issue is like what, we're not talking about just slavery. I think that's a whole other conversation. We're talking about stuff that happened 50, 60 years ago. Right. We're mm -hmm. talking about people being prevented from buying houses in certain neighborhoods, people being prevented from getting loans. And we know and I'm sure as you do as, a, as somebody that's financially literate, home ownership is the fastest way to pass down generational wealth. Mm -hmm. And you have a, 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 an entire race of people that was prevented from doing this arguably some would argue until the 60s some would argue until the 80s right and and my video is to say oh and by the way why don't we ever bring up the war on drugs and all these other things that mm -hmm. happened after um the civil rights act passed so you can't just gloss over the homestead act where people were giving prop free property to move to migrate west but black people were excluded from that right we can't look we can't look past the fact that they were excluded from getting the gi bill right uh redlining so all these things were systemically created to disrupt black people developing ownership. And I don't know if you can direct all of it, but when you look at the disparity of black people and white people and wealth, right? And you're talking about 150,000 for the average white family is their mm -hmm. net worth to 15,000 for the average black family is their net worth. That's a wild disparity. Can we trace all that back to the war on drugs? No. Can we trace all of that back to Jim Crow and slavery? No. But some of it can be the social engineering of those though those laws definitely had a trickle down effect to these communities. Do you believe that systemic race? I mean, the systemic racism today plays a part and is holding people back to achieve their wildest dreams. 
it, it depends on your definition of systemic racism. I think we may have different definitions of systemic racism. So you got you got you got to define so, what, no, what that you, means. For you define it. Go ahead. So my my definition of systemic racism would be the policies from yesterday, the policies that impacted my father in law, mm -hmm. right, where he caught a petty drug offense and then had to go to jail for five years or some outlandish number. Where today, because we've changed some of these laws, today he would have just gotten the slap on the wrist or treatment, mm -hmm. right? I think those policies, yes, drastically impact generations today. And if you want to talk about specific racist laws that were that are current, we could talk about the 100 to 1 crack versus coke disparity, right? We could talk about the fact that Alabama didn't, um, uh, didn't lift their ban on interracial marriage until the year 2000, right? That's recent. Right. So that's a racist law without yeah. a doubt in our lifetime. Right. The, the, uh, the Fair Sentencing Act uh, in 2010. That's a recent law. Mississippi didn't technically abolish slavery legally. You can, you can look this up until 2013. Mm -hmm. Right. Racist laws in our lifetime. Do those though? There's a law from 10, 15, 20 years ago impact black communities today. Absolutely. Absolutely, it does. So my definition of systemic racism will be a broader one in that there are systems and structures that have been corrupted by racist laws. Maybe not today. I can't point to one today. I would say qualified immunity definitely can uh, disproportionately affect poor and people of color. Qualified immunity, I think, needs to be changed. That's something that's sketchy. But I can't point to a racist law today. But that doesn't mean that a law from 10, 15, 20 years ago doesn't impact our psyche as Americans and doesn't impact how people have access to wealth. I, I'll make this very tangible for you. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife are trying to buy our first home, uh -huh. right? All of our white friends, you know how they bought their first home? How? Oh. Their, their parents had Because money. their parents, right? And I'm not that, that, I guess you could say that's anecdotal, but I could say, well, the average white family has $150,000 net worth. I'm an immigrant. I don't, we, my, my, I come from nothing. My wife's, yeah. my wife's dad and mom were victims of the, of, of the harsh sentencing of the war on drugs. Yeah. So guess who's not giving us a $100,000 down payment to get our first home, mm -hmm. right? We have to defy the odds. We have to go above and beyond. And yes, we could still reach our wildest dreams, but you can't look at Oprah and say, because Oprah did it, anybody can get to Oprah's level. That's just not how it works. That, again, that's survivorship bias. In, in my opinion, I think that that is a very, um, when, it, when it's talking about um, systemic racism, the the, I don't believe in it today. I think that today anybody could do what they have to do. I think the one who chooses that is not even the government. It's not even you. I think it's far beyond you and me. It's far beyond the law. I think the one who chooses that is God. God is the one who decides who he sends to the villager in Africa and who he sends to the Wall Street banker uh, as a child. You know, I mean, so God is the one that de decided all these things. Right. And so your friends that their parents have money or had money. God is the one that decided, and I can look at them, at your friends, for example, oh, look at them, the parents have money. No, that's just, God decided that for them. They did certain things. They were in more advantageous situations, and they had that. Now, now I have to put in my work and mm -hmm. and, and, and get mine, right? Because, again, I'm, I'm the people here in the United States um, crying about systemic racism would a, a person, and let, me, let me not even take it to Africa, a person in my country, the Dominican Republic, will wish they had the opportunities that are given mm -hmm. to the people here and would not be crying about systemic racism. I get it. I, and I don't think nobody disagrees. Nobody disagrees with the laws of yesteryears and the policies. I mean, whoever would disagree was that uh, th that there were laws on the books like Jim Cross brought forth. A lot, and again, a lot of these policies and all of these racist policies were brought up by um liberal minded democratic minded go government um institutions like the democratic party which is responsible for the kkk jim crow laws they did not want the, the slaves to get freed etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. um those those are facts on the books nobody can deny those things but to say today that me that i can't tell my child right my child is i'm, I'm dominican they were born here that i cannot tell my child who's a person what they will call a person of color that you cannot become the president of the United States if you want to, I think I'll, I'll be doing a disservice to my child telling yeah, him. Yeah, I, I don't think it's about telling or limiting anybody. What I'm saying is, um, and you're right, ultimately God is sovereign. Ultimately God is in control. I'm with you there. And ultimately, um, I'm 
I'm fine with the, with the hand that I've been dealt. Cause I'm way more mm. resilient than my friends who got a hundred thousand dollar gift. Right. I have, I have a certain character. Yeah. <laughs> I have that, certain the, the street uh, smarts that, that they don't yeah. have. <laughs> right. Right. And I have a certain degree of, of, of perseverance and resilience and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with where I'm at in life. So that's not to say that, uh, I, oh, woe is me because I didn't get a hundred thousand dollar down payment to buy a home in Southern California. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying if we acknowledge, I think I think an acknowledgement of that is not the same as telling my son he can or can't do mm. something, right? Um, the, the the conversation I have with my son every night is, mm. hey, do you know that you're made made in the image of God? That's you know one. that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. That's do you know that you have limitless potential, mm. right? So I think. That, that, that you don't have to pin the two ideas against each other. Mm. One can acknowledge that I, I'll, I'll make it very simple for you. I got a buddy, my, my buddy, I got, I got my nephew. My nephew is 16. Mm. He's six foot four, mm. about to be six foot five. He's 160 pounds. Mm. Right now I'm five foot 10 and a half. <laughs> I'm Armenian, right? I'm a, Armenian, and there's never been an Armenian that's made it to the NBA. If you count the Kardashians, we wiped out more careers in the NBA than we started, right? So one, I'm five foot ten. I'm Armenian, yeah. um, and and I'm and I'm 35, right? My nephew is 16. He's a sophomore in high school. Wow. Okay. He's about to be a sophomore in high school. He's six four. So right now, today, I could ball up my nephew in basketball. I just get embarrassed, right? Right. But but are we going to seriously sit here and say that he doesn't have an advantage over me in the grand scheme of the game of basketball in the life of the overall life? He has an advantage, period. That's 100 percent. Right? And so 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 I think we do have to adva acknowledge advantages and say, listen, um, my buddy who comes from a family where the dad's a lawyer, then on his on his wife's side, multimillionaire family, boom they get a hundred thousand dollar down payment to buy their first home or whatever the number is. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we just can't gloss over that and say, well, that's not a, no, it's an advantage. Ultimately I'm okay that I don't get to go to the NBA and my nephew could potentially, if he put in the work and he worked really, really, really hard, mm -hmm. he could. But I think where we, where we get, um, where we get delusional as Americans mm -hmm. is you want to tell me that I'm, I can go to the NBA and be the next LeBron. No, man, it's not. The, it's not in. It's not in the hands for me. It's not going to happen. Now, can I get nice at basketball? Of course. Yeah. But then, on that same token, right? I'm you nice. Should, you you, you should, know what I'm saying? Am I going to be LeBron? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. But on that same token, right? You cannot say that. Uh, you 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 could. I'm, I'm not going to feed you the lie. Oh yeah, you could make it to the NBA, right? Because that's just plain a lie. But on the same token, we we cannot tell Americans also that you deserve to be in the NBA because. Yeah, Certain thing 100%. we can, so we gotta be. There has 100%. to be like a, a, a middle ground.